Could you imagine being in a love relationship with a robot in the future? <laughs> we couldn't either. However, technological advancement disagrees. Real Momentum Advances in robotics and AI are starting to gain some real momentum. In the coming decades, scientists predict robots will take over more and more jobs, including white-collar ones, and gain ubiquity in the home, school, and work spheres. Due to this, roboticists and AI experts, social scientists, psychologists, and others are speculating what impact it will have on us and our world. Google and Oxford have teamed up to make a kill switch should AI initiate a robot apocalypse. One way to overcome this is to imbue AI with emotions and empathy, to make them as human-like as possible, so much so that it may become difficult to tell robots and real people apart. In this vein, scientists have wondered if it might be possible for a human to fall in love with a robot, considering we are moving toward fashioning them after our own image. Spike Jonze's Her and the movie Ex Machina touch on this. Recent studies have found that humans can feel concern over a robot if they think that it is in pain. This indicates that we can feel as much empathy for a mechanical person as a biological one. Of course, emotional concern is not the same as romantic love. The thought of humans interacting with robots on a complex emotional level was first tested back in 1966. Eliza, the psychologist. Back then, MIT professor Joseph Weizenbaum created a computer program called Eliza, who took the role of a psychologist. It asked participants therapy-like questions to see how they would respond and interact with the program. People soon began treating Eliza as if it were a living, breathing person. Though not as advanced as AI today, it did elicit in-depth responses. In fact, Wiesenbaum soon found that subjects were more comfortable revealing details to the program than they were to most people. Perhaps they did so knowing that Eliza wouldn't judge. There are indications that falling for a robot is possible. For instance, research shows that people who chit-chat via email, messenger, and on the phone, or through text, often feel a more bond than those who chat face-to-face. -face. The pressure is off, and so too might it be with a robot. A simpler relationship. Anyone who has found love complicated, basically all of us, has wished for a simpler relationship, and a robot may fit the bill. Still, AI is not at the level where it can make nuanced emotional responses. Ever go on a date with someone who doesn't have any emotional or intellectual depth? It's such a turnoff. NYU psychology professor Gary Marcus says there are different kinds of love. Right now, we may find a relationship with a robot much like that of dog and master, at least until their intellectual and emotional intelligence is up to snuff. Another stumbling block is whether or not the robot could love you back. Today, our mechanized counterparts can recognize human facial expressions and respond to them. This isn't the robot feeling the emotion itself or responding out of empathy, but merely out of programming. In human relationships, we may notice that one person loves more than the other or contributes more. This is difficult in and of itself. When the discrepancy is apparent, we often consider one person using the other. You don't really love me, a jilted lover might claim. Since we have no way of instilling emotions and empathy in robots currently, and we don't know if it will be possible, a synthetic human may become a good faker, but may in fact be incapable of loving you back. Faking it. This knowledge that the machine is faking it or that it is unable to authentically love could bite the person, a worry that begins to bubble up more and more until it finally destroys the relationship. So you may be able to love a robot, but some people may not be able to sustain it long term. For those who can be fulfilled by the fantasy, companies could make a suitable lover based on their own specifications. These would include both physical and personality traits. The synthetic suitor would have to be programmed with certain faults as well, since imperfections would make the lover relatable. A perfect person can get on your nerves after a while, making your own faults seem pronounced. And what about stigmatization? Would a human-robot relationship be deemed as worthy as a human-to-human -human one? Or would those who kept a robot be considered unable to find or attract a real person? Another aspect is what human-robot relationships would do to the organic variety. Why love someone who never loads the dishwasher, forgets your birthday, or hates your friends when a robot won't ever? Of course, one could argue that these interactions could never have the depth, texture, or breadth that a real human relationship has, warts and all distasteful. Most people today find the idea of robot human love distasteful, but it could be worse than just merely offensive. Dr. Kathleen Richardson, a UK robotics ethicist, told the BBC that love bots could seriously damage human relationships, to say nothing of it glorifying whether it be that of a living being or no. Yet the very definitions of love, courtship, marriage and companionship have changed dramatically throughout history. 
Perhaps this is why British AI specialist David Levy recently penned the book Love and Sex with Robots. He predicts human-robot marriages will be commonplace by 2050. Levy also believes you'll be able to order a lover or spouse to specifications and it will even be able to carry on a sophisticated conversation, something our human partners today may fail to do. Distracted by the love of another technology already threatening relationships, smartphones. If you use social media, you will doubtless have seen some adorable video of a toddler attempting some confused conversation with Siri or wishing its parents Alexa good night. If you are more plugged into the progress these companies are making, you may have seen the video from 2018 of Google's assistant booking a hairdressing appointment without announcing itself as an AI. The idea of a robot passing itself off as a human is millennia older than Turing, but only now are we starting to see the real commercial possibilities, possibilities that are being tweezed from all angles by very clever people with very large amounts of cash. Then, for much of 2020, citizens of the developed world were forced into their homes for extended periods of government-sanctioned isolation. If you were isolating alone, you may have started to receive some peculiar recommendations from whichever algorithms run your preferred app store. Apps like Replica AI, a prototypical Samantha minus many of her higher functions and Scarlett Johansson, began to appear as recommended across mobile storefronts. News channels in the UK continue to run stories on robots like Pepper, which were being deployed in care homes as an attempt to combat the shortage in care workers and to talk with patients. And naturally, stories began to appear about owners of digital assistants leaning increasingly on them for the sorts of services that a real-life assistant could confidently take to a no-win, no-fee law firm. Natural Love Attachments Not that being human beings need millions of data points to find themselves developing emotional bonds with inanimate objects. Before baby humans can even waddle upright, we see them forming what appear to be loving attachments not just to non-human pets, but to inanimate objects. No parent whose toddler has ever left a favorite stuffed toy on holiday has been unclear on the depth of the child's connection to Flopsy. And while we mostly outgrow connections to toy animals, our ability to form connections outside our species never really goes away. So it is, in fact, very much possible. But this presents an obvious engineering problem for the would-be makers of companion robots. Faking emotional investment is more challenging than faking a nice pair of breasts. The two halves of this market want different things, as is born out of the almost total market dominance of dolls aimed at men. And one of those things is much, much harder than the other. Perhaps designing companion robots that deliberately don't emulate human beings is the answer to that common sci-fi question of whether or not a relationship with a robot can ever be reciprocal. A robot with a Kindle for a head isn't likely to hoodwink many people at the singles bar. When science fiction shows us robotic robots, they are overwhelmingly portrayed as human, at least outwardly. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.